Welcome artists to the soft pastel painting tutorial I'm calling Illuminating Moments, Mastering Light with Soft Pastel. This lesson here on the Monet Cafe channel is an abbreviated version of the full real-time lesson over on my Patreon page. But not to worry, here on the Monet Cafe channel, I'm going to be breaking down many of these techniques. You're gonna learn a lot, including how to create this wet underpainting technique with alcohol and I will teach you a beautiful glazing technique to create a vast field of purple flowers. And speaking about the color purple, this video will also feature my newly curated set by J. Luda Pastels called Pretty in Purple. And if you become a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you'll have a chance to win this set. I'll describe more in a minute. So come on into the studio, artist, and let's get started. My Patreon version of this lesson also includes all of the pastel colors that I used as well. All right, let's talk about this pretty in purple set by J. Luda Pastels. It was lovely to work with the J. Luda company to curate this set of purples. Now purple happens to be my favorite color, but that wasn't the only reason I wanted to create this set. Many pastel sets are lacking the color purple, and I'm telling you, these purples are just beautiful. Purple can lean a little more blue and it can also lean a little more pink as in the magenta pinks that are on the left side and the more periwinkle blue tones on the right side. And I wanted to also include some nice neutrals in the set. So it's just a really lovely little selection of purples. J. Luda pastels are also very soft and makes it perfect for getting those final marks. You'll see me glazing these purples over the field and also using some of them before I create my wet underpainting technique. I do recommend, in addition to this set, if you're looking for some great purples, you're gonna need some really good dark purples too. And some of the best dark purples I've ever found are with the Terry Ludwig pastels. And the four that I have lifted up on the end there, those are four of the dark purples that I used in this painting. I'll have a link in this video description where you can order individual sticks of pastels. And again, over on my Patreon page, I go over all these color numbers. But just so you know, this is the really dark, dark purple everybody loves. It's called V100, the eggplant color. Excellent dark. And I thought I'd show you my other little palette that I keep nearby in my studio with just various purples. I've got Mount Vision pastels in here. They're the large round ones. Terry Ludwig's are the square looking ones. I break them in half. I like to have varying values from light to dark and I even have a few neutrals in here as well. Before we get started painting, would you do me a quick favor? Click that like button. It helps YouTube to share this video more often. And leave me a comment if you like and by all means subscribe to this channel. The surface I'll be using is Fisher 400. It is a professional pastel surface. It's sanded. The 400 stands for the degree of sandedness. And it's an excellent paper. It's water friendly, as you'll see in a minute. But unfortunately, it's out of stock at two locations where I normally buy it. Hopefully, it'll be back in stock soon. But you can use replacements for this. UART 400 is almost just like this paper. It just curls a little bit. It's not my favorite. I'll have links to other products or surfaces in the description of this video. And as I always say, use what you have. Make sure it's water friendly if you're gonna apply the water like I do soon. And oh, this reference image, it's from unsplash.com. The theme this month in Monet Cafe is whispers of light. So not only did I want to capture an image that had this gentle light, it looked like morning light, I also wanted to feature the color purple because of the beautiful pretty and purple set. And I'll also have a link to this reference image in the description of this video. Now I have my surface taped to my board. You can see I did a study over there to the left and I used that and the reference image to work from. And that study was done just on a regular unsanded pastel paper, very affordable. I'm gonna be providing a separate tutorial for that. I began with a very simple sketch. I'm using just a little stick of a Prismacolor New Pastel. It's spelled N-U Pastel, not N-E-W. And these are pretty affordable little sticks of pastels. They're harder, they're better for sketching. 
but you could use whatever you have. Charcoal, even a pencil would work for this. And by the way, I have a link to my Amazon shop in every YouTube video tutorial that I have. And it has some very convenient little idea lists that you can click to find my recommended pastel painting products. I even have one specifically for beginners. All right, so my hands are moving a lot here because in my Patreon version of this, it's all real time. I talk through everything. But in this version, I'm speeding things up. I think you'll like the sped up version. I'm gonna get to all the most important principles and uh, you can always slow it down on YouTube. There's a gear icon in the lower right of the video and you can slow it down. Make sure you turn the volume down though because my voice will sound very strange. I don't really have room in my screen to superimpose the reference image as I sketch, but you can see my study over there to the left. And what I'm doing now is I'm looking, the horizon line is a little bit above halfway in the scene, and I'm making little marks where I see the rows coming out of the horizon line and into the sides of the paper. I kept my size of my paper proportional to my reference image. So it made it really easy for finding where these rows of these, these fields of flowers um, landed at the bottom of the paper. It's a super easy way to do it. And this is just typical, kind of like three point perspective. And so I'm looking now at kind of where the trees fall in this. There's a little bit of sky showing and I'm not trying to sketch trees and leaves and branches here. I'm getting tree shapes and I find the more geometric you can be with this really the more painterly and the better and note here to where the sun would be kind of like where that mountain just kind of curved down you'll see me develop that soon and i'm trying to create a scene where i've got these lines coming in and then the clouds are going to radiate out you saw my hands doing that a second ago now what i'm doing is using my same little prismacolor new pastel it's great because you can paint with the side of it literally painting in color and you can use the tip of it to sketch with and i'm just trying to get in my darker values which are primarily the trees almost everything vertical is a little darker and these rows in between the rows where you've got the tall um, shrubs of these flowers and they're vertical too so that's you know kind of why they're darker and you know it's really not all that hard I always say painting's easy once you know the rules there's really just a few rules you need to know and you need to practice of course and that was step one, pretty easy, right? So the next thing we'll be doing is creating an underpainting. And it literally is what it sounds like, a painting under a painting. Trust me, I get so many questions about this. Why, what color to use? But a great color to use underneath the landscape painting are some warm colors. The reason is because your landscapes are mostly green and blue, and the warm colors are complementary. On the color wheel, they're opposite. So they're gonna make those greens really show up. I chose these two pretty colors. One's more peachy and one's a little more cool red. And I'm going to use that for the earth. I want to get something for these grasses to grow out of. And this is where I'm going to show you that magic technique of wetting pastels. We literally can turn pastels into paint when we wet them. So once we get these warm underpainting colors in along with the darker values, I'm going to show you how I do that. It's really fun and there's a lot of benefits to it. Now I'm using the darker value, the one more red, in the foreground parts. And then I'm using the lighter, more peachy one. It's just a, it's not much lighter in value, but I'm layering that one in the rows as they recede back towards the horizon line. I added a pretty orange type of color here. And now what I'm going to do is use a lighter value. I realized that one was too dark. Notice how I'm going lighter here as I'm moving further away into the field. And why would I do that? Well, that's because in nature, things get lighter in value as they recede into the distance. There's something called aerial perspective, which causes um, a lot of things to happen. Things get lighter in value. They usually get cooler in color and they usually get a little more neutral in color. And now, even though I got my darks in to begin with, with my sketch, I am going to get some darks that are even more rich. And this is, looks like it's a really little pastel here. It's actually the Terry Ludwig eggplant color I mentioned earlier, the V100. And this underpainting that I'm creating is actually part of a process or stage with painting, not just pastel painting, called blocking in. I am blocking in my big shapes, 
colors and values and of course my colors are warmer for the underpainting that was a beautiful little um, J Luda from my pretty in purple set and while it may look like a mess right now this serves as a wonderful foundation to begin my painting and I had no idea about any of this before I started painting. I'm a totally self-taught artist, so I always say if I can do it, you can do it too. And it's really, again, just learning some simple principles and you can really learn to paint. Now this is part of my Patreon version where I was talking about color, a little bit of color theory. And now it's time to wet these pastels and turn them into paint. Now you could use water for this process, but I like to use alcohol, regular alcohol that you can get from a drugstore. I like 70% alcohol. It doesn't smell quite as bad. And the reason I use alcohol is it dries faster, especially if I'm doing a demonstration in front of anyone and I, I really need to work fast. So uh, this works great, but you could also use water. When doing this process, I like to use the biggest brush that I can. It helps to keep things painterly. But the one that I used for the whole underpainting is this brush here. It's called a hockey brush, H-A-K-E. I'll have a link to that in this description. And I put my alcohol, again, you could use water, in a little ball jar. And I literally just dip my brush in it. I don't even wipe it off to clean it. The alcohol kind of cleans the brush. And I start painting. And one thing I found that was really nice is the, the pinkish um, mountain area. It blended so nicely. That's one of the J. Luda pastels from my Pretty in Purple set. Um, whatever pastel was in the sky was a little chunky, but it still works great. This underpainting is not supposed to look beautiful. It's supposed to serve as a great foundation to lay our other colors on top of. And we've got our values correct. We've got already a great roadmap to get started. And by the way, I work light to dark when I do this wet underpainting technique. I started with the sky and the lighter values, and I'm finishing up with the darkest values. Again, the trees and the ground in between these rows. They won't stay this dark, by the way. That's the beauty of pastels. We layer. Oh, another thing is it turns this into paint, so it's not even as dusty anymore. I can literally wipe my hand across this, and the pastel doesn't come off. And if you recall, the title of this video is Creating Illuminating Light. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this concept. We basically don't go for the lightest value first. I wanted to create a sun in the crevice of that mountain, like a morning sun peeking over. So I started with a value that was a little darker, peachy tone, the same peach that I used in the underpainting in the foreground. I lightened up the mountain a little bit with a little bit of light lavender, you can see. That's because the sun is shining on it. And I'm going to just start blending some of these values together. I'm not going for that lightest yellow first. And the way I think about it is your light values really aren't going to show up as light and brilliant if they're on a light surface. So you've got to create a little bit of value. Now what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of a, it's kind of a peachy yellow. It's not my lightest light, but now I've got this lighter value. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of that kind of into the center, letting a little bit of that other yellow peek through. Now can you see how that instantly looks like a sun glowing over the mountain? And let me show you the colors that I used to achieve this effect. It was basically, the first one was that peachy color. Then I used a little bit of that lavender to blend out the edges. And then those two yellows. You can see that I had layered some blue over that pink mountain. Again, this version on Monet Cafe has some limited content. But now I just put a little green, really pale green. It gave that feeling of trees on the mountain far away. And finally, I'm starting to add some of these greens on top of the beautiful orange and warm tones. Here I'm just using a little piece of pipe foam insulation to blend some of the pastels. You can see it kind of softened the foreground. I'm using the same greens I used in the foreground just to dapple some of it on the trees and all of a sudden they start looking like trees. It's amazing. And now I want you to watch this painting come to life and I'm also going to describe how you can win the J. Luda Pretty in Purple set that I uh, curated and has become recently made available on the J. Luda website. Basically all you need to do 
is become a patron of mine on my Patreon page. That's the way you can get not only this full lesson, but hundreds of full pastel painting lessons. And what I think is great is you become part of my Patreon family. It's such a great group of artists. I get to see your work. It's a wonderful place to be. And it's only $5 a month. So how do you win the set? Become a patron for only $5 a month. You have to become a patron from the airing or showing of this video through September. I'm going to be announcing the winner in September. So that's all you have to do. It's only $5 a month and the winner will be randomly chosen only from those people who become patrons of mine during that time. So it's pretty good odds. So I hope you will become a patron of mine and uh, I look forward to announcing the winner. I'll have all of those details in the description of the video as well. All right, now I'm getting to the sky. Can you see I added some energetic marks with these beautiful colors of the J. Luda set? I used, I would say probably about eight to 10 of the colors in the J. Luda set, not only for that pink mountain in the distance, remember when I did the underpainting, um, but also for many of the purples in the sky. And you'll see coming up in a second how some of the J. Luda pastels are just beautiful colors for distant mountains. So in this painting, I use the J. Ludas for uh, the sky, the mountains, the flowers, some of the shadows, and uh, it was a really nice versatile set. All right, now it's time to turn on the lights. You see, I've got a layer of some of my darker and middle value greens, and uh, now it's time to establish some of the greens that are on top where that uh, morning sunlight is casting through those trees and catching on some of the tops of these rows. And that's typically how we work with pastel painting and other mediums, acrylic and oil. Typically we paint dark to light. And I think of it as working from the ground up. I think of things planted in the ground usually start with darker shadows. And as they grow up, the sunlight's catching more of those middle uh, height grasses. And then finally the lightest grasses on the top the lightest values. All right. Now I'm not working with the J. Luda pastels here. I'm working with some of my darker pastels. Remember at the beginning of this tutorial, I said I wanted some darks. Uh, this is a beautiful dark Terry Ludwig pastel. I wanted some rich purples. And notice the looseness of my strokes. You know, if you follow me long, I love impressionism. So I really just try to capture the gesture of the flower and not necessarily the species. And also, it is a good idea to often use some blues intermingled with your purples because often there's a little hint of uh, cooler areas in purple flowers and it just makes such a great combination. So the flowers look a little blue for a while until I add some more of the purples. I also like to keep harmonious color throughout a painting. It's called color echoing. That's why I added a little of that blue to the distant mountain you see to the right. So I've got a little of the blue in the foreground left and a little blue in the distant mountain. Added a little bit of it to the sky and all of a sudden this painting starts to feel connected. All right, now here's where I'm adding a little more purple. I'm adding it to not only these flowers that I have in the foreground, but I'm starting to sprinkle it into flowers as they're receding into the distance. And also these flowers, when I first looked at them in the reference image, I thought that it was lavender and it's not. For any of you flower experts out there, maybe you can zoom into the reference um, and check it out and see what type are these flowers. They're really pretty. So here I'm using these gorgeous J. Luda pastels. They are really great for layering as final marks. Once you've gotten down multiple layers of pastels, often harder pastels won't layer this nicely. They, you can't even get the color to come off, but because these are so soft, um, they're really just great for this final layering and mark making. Um, I'm looking at another pastel here. This one here is a Giro pastel and notice it leans a little blue. So I'm getting a little of that blue um, in the middle area where some of those flowers are. And that one also just layered and glazed over so easily. So I'm getting those little hints of lavender blue and a bit more magenta blue. And again, I'm trying to have everything very connected. The blue and the purple in the mountains are echoing the same blue and purple in the flowers. So still sprinkling some more um, different purples into the flowers. And I might've got a little crazy with my flowers but I was having fun and I hope this was fun for you. I hope you learned something about pastel painting and also about the beautiful J. Luda set of pastels, Pretty in Purple. I'll have 
more information about all of those things in the description of this video. Here is the final painting, and I actually think I'm going to keep this one. I kind of like it. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. And of course, become a patron to become part of my beautiful Patreon family. All right, everyone. God bless and happy painting.